Ouais, ça Hallelujah. 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 How many of you don't wait for time? <laughs> how many of you, you, you know, time ticks and all of that happens. And, but how many of you, how many of you get, it gets so good to you that you forget what time it is? Come on, somebody. God has been so good. Have you experienced God this week? I need some people who have experienced God this week. And see, when you experience God, you experience God's goodness. Amen? Amen. The Bible declares that you may see the, 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 the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That thing hit me this morning because we have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I got a few students over there at St. Og that were going through, going through, going through. And we've just been fasting and praying and fasting and praying and God has done exceedingly yeah. and abundantly yeah. above that which we could ask or even think oh, yeah. for God's children see one thing about God God's going to take care of God's own whether you like it or not God is going to take care of God's own what a joy what a privilege good morning Juniper good morning Juniper good morning Juniper I'm excited about God. I'm excited about living. I was able to fast 30 days in Lent and then fast 30 days of Ramadan. That's 60 days of fasting and praying and believing God. And then God shows up. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Good God from Zion. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God, we say thank you. God, we thank you for the world watching. The world is watching your children, God, and how we're going to behave in the midst of all that's going on. God, we will declare and decree your word. God, you said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell. God, we will declare your word all over the world. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for as we believe in your word, God, you show yourself mighty. And God, we will not be ashamed of you for you said if we'd be ashamed of you, you'd be ashamed of us before our Father in heaven. God, we say thank you. God, we love you. Have your way, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 There's a sweet spirit in this place this morning. As I was meditating this morning, I just said, God, I just feel a sweetness a stillness and I don't want to sing hard I just want to sing sweetly this morning because that's how I feel his presence this morning the hymn says blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh what I fall divine I'm an heir of salvation purchased by God born of 
his spirit washed in his blood blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh what a Oh, my God, his spirit washed in his blood. Oh, this is my story. Oh, this is my song. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Praising my Savior. Don't you feel his presence this morning? All the day long. Thank you, Father. Praising my Savior. Oh. My Savior, all the day long silence, the noise in my mind, Lord, and open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see you. Oh, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see To see you high and lifted up, oh my God, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power in love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Silence the noise in my mind, Lord, and open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on, just sing that with me. Say, silence the noise. Silence the noise in my mind, Lord. Open the eyes, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high, to see you high. Your glory, pour out your power, pour out your power in love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. See you. 
song shall rise to thee. Oh, holy, 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 merciful, merciful, and mighty. For you are God, God in three verses. Oh, blessed friend, God's here for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, oh, you are God. God in three breaths. Blessed dreams. Oh, come on, come on. Go ahead and worship him. My, 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 my. Even in this time like these, we still need a savior. Even in days like these, we can still call on him. Before you go to your seat, just, just let's worship him a, even more. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Thank you. Everything that we need, thou hands has provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, have mercy. My, 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 my. Might you look at your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, he's been good to me. He's been, he's been good to me. You can be seated if you can. You can be seated. The atmosphere has been set. Amen. How many know the atmosphere has been set in the house. Amen. Well, good morning. It's good to see all of you. It's good to see all of you this morning. You have blessed us that God has did it, done it one more time. One more time. He's allowed us to be here. And I don't want you to take that for granted. There are people who went to sleep last night, but they are not here this morning. And so there are people in ICU. There are people who are in nursing homes and rest homes. But God has graciously given us the strength to get out of bed, take care of ourselves, and safe travels to his house one more time. Can you give him praise for that? Amen. He did it one more time. Just a quick reminder, a quick reminder of this is the day, the last day to take pictures. Amen. We want to take pictures. We want to get your, your pictures. Amen. We promise to protect them. 
<laughs> we promised to protect it, but this is the last day to take pictures. Uh, we thank God for that. Lieutenant Layman, come on, let's thank God for Lieutenant Layman for Raleigh PD is with us. Amen. We thank you. Um, him and I will be today at 2.30, 2.30 at uh, 121 Seaboard. I had to get the address as we celebrate with the Greater uh, Jewish Federation of Raleigh as this is truly Passover as they will celebrate Passover together and we're going to be there to support them. Amen. How many know if in order to have friends, you have to show yourself friendly. So what, what a day that we'll go over after uh, all of the things that we're doing at 8, 9, 30, 11, and 1. But we'll find ourselves at 121 Seaboard that we might enjoy that. Amen. And then uh, next Saturday, next Saturday at 11 o'clock, uh, the flyer is out, our youth, and we're inviting everyone else that they might come, that we might have an awesome time as uh, the chief and her staff, Lieutenant Layman and others from Raleigh will be there so we can meet uh, the police department. It's a fun time, hot dogs, hamburgers, all of those things. Some of the brothers here will be cooking. Amen. They say they're grill masters, Mike. I don't know. We'll see. Amen. That, there's some people that says, uh, uh, okay, we'll see. Amen. We're partnering with Our Care, Providence Church, and other places. Uh, churches are donating, and we're so excited about the partnership. Amen. <coughs> well, I'm going to get into the word. Uh, there is a, a powerful and sweet spirit in the place today. Amen. Amen. Can I call your attention to Romans 15? Oh, I'm sorry. One last thing. Uh, today, last day to give St. Alk as you leave. If there will be a bucket, amen, that we give to St. Alk. We want to give to St. Alk to the students. Uh, remember this to the students. Amen. This to the students. They got two more weeks. Two more weeks and it's over. It's hard to believe even uh, two more weeks. Amen. Two more weeks and they'll that part will be over and we would they would have lasted because the kids had nothing to do with this. Amen. Can I say that again? Kids had nothing to do with all the other stuff. Our responsibility is that if that was your child, would you want your child uh, to be taken care of? Amen. So all we're going to do is bless them. Amen. Archbishop Brooks is, is chairing that. Amen. So whatever we collect, we're going to give to Archbishop Brooks and, and he'll make sure it's in the right hands. Amen. And, and, and that's, that's just it. Amen. We, we collected last Sunday. We want to collect today. Give it to him. Let him do uh, and let the kids be blessed. Amen. And then send them off and then we'll see what the end going to be. Amen. Amen. So let's do that uh, today. Would you stand with us to, to the reading of God's word, Romans 15. Thank God for yesterday with the hub, with the new members and all the things that have been taking place uh, over there. Amen. And remember, I've been told about the rose. So if you want to plant something, the community garden is open. Amen. I got a call yesterday and someone says, hey, do you have any more rose? Uh, we do. We got some rose for you. Amen. All you, you can get as many as you want right now, two, three rows, and all we ask is you help us uh, keep it squared away. Amen. You got to you gotta go around and dig a little hole in, and you know, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but some, many of us can't have, we don't have a place to have and plant collards and other uh, tomatoes and all of that. This community garden completely organic, completely organic, so that you can uh, plant your seeds, and it's yours, amen, and, and we go from there. Amen? Just another way we're trying to help the community out, because we do know that there are some people old school would love to plant their own vegetables, amen, and go from there, but at your house, you can't do it. We've got the perfect soil. It's been tested. It's perfect. It's from Juniper Level uh, Botanical. Mr. Tony Avent has donated all of it, so it's completely, we get it tested by the people. We've got master gardeners here that make sure everything is right, amen, and then while you're helping, you know, I'll be out probably tomorrow morning pulling some weeds. Amen. We just need to pull some weeds. And as I always say, there's nothing I ask you to do that I won't do myself. Amen. Got to put some mulch and things like that out, but it's just an exercise for me. Amen. Anything we do for the Lord, 
that will be the one that will last. Amen? Amen. So Romans 15, beginning at verse 29, can we welcome them from South Africa? Amen. They are listening, reference South Africa. It's hard to believe, Reeves, in two months, a little over two months, we'll be in South Africa. We'll, we look forward to seeing you in Johannesburg and Santon. We look forward to see them, Pastor Q and Tybo. We look forward to seeing the boys and everybody else in Johannesburg in two months. Two months we'll be in Johannesburg. Amen? I'm looking forward to it. Look, and we're going a little uh, other places. We're going to go where Nelson Mandela was. Amen. In prison. So we're going to go to Cape Town. We're going to do those type things. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Next year. Amen. It's too late this year. But next year, you ought to put it on your plan. If you've never been over to South Africa, you ought to, get, you ought to put it in your plan. Start, start saving now. Amen? Romans 15, beginning at verse 29. Pastor, that's too far. Amen. Well, you know, go ye therefore. Romans 15, beginning at verse 29. My hope is that my visit with you is going to be one of Christ's more extravagant blessings. I have one request, dear friends. Pray for me. Pray strenuously with and for me to God the Father through the power of our Master Jesus, through the love of the, of the Spirit, that I will be delivered from the lion's den of unbelievers in Judea. Pray also that my relief offering to the Jerusalem Christians will be accepted in the spirit in which it is given. Then God's willing. I'll be on my way to you with a light and eager heart, looking forward to being refreshed by your company. God, peace be with all of you. Oh, yes. Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, pray for me. Look at him in the eyes behind the mask. Just say, pray for, pray for me. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the, the week. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for blessing us. But even more now, we need prayer. God, everything is in disarray. Even on last evening, Iran launching uh, missiles over into Israel. And your word begins to tell us in Zechariah, watch Israel. When there are attacks on Israel, be careful with that. Amen. So God, have your way with us this day. Bless us and keep us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at one more person. Say, pray for me. And while you're going to your seat, come on, welcome to seven institution, prison institution that are listening to us on 92.1 Choice FM. Amen. One more time, pray for me. At last watch, Lieutenant Layman, we were in 2 Kings chapter 18. I tell you, we were there, Jay, where we began to tie it in, Shelby, together, where, where there is a king by the name of King Hezekiah. Hezekiah is in Israel. He's in Judah. Judah means praise. He is, he's there, but he's under attack. Very similar, Dre, like they are being under attack now, but they were under attack. So it, it ought to, we ought to stop there for a moment and understand that this is not the first attack. Look at your neighbor and say, this is not the first attack. Truth of the matter is, we all are under attack. You can't live on this earth without being under attack. The Bible says that from Job 14 and 1, man dawn of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Look at your neighbor and say, you're under attack. I'm, on, I'm, I'm under attack. And so the attacks then are, are, are natural. The attacks are inevitable. The attacks, you just have to be, somebody just not going to like you. Somebody is going to come after you. Somebody will use what you did as positive and flip the script and get negative. In other words, you cannot exist on earth without being Toshiba attack. And, and so the question is not whether I'm going to be attacked. The question is, how do I deal with the attacks? Well, come with me and I tie, as we tie Romans 15, 29 through 33, because under this, Paul is under attack. And his attack from last week is his attack. He says, simply, look, pray for me. I'm doing a good thing, but I don't know if it's going to be received in the way it was intended. 
Last week, we, we just dealt with the fact that sometimes when you want to do good, evil is still present. Sometimes I, I have the right intentions. I'm trying to do it the right way. I'm trying to do the right thing. And yet and still, some folks will flip it and make it seem like it's about me. I was just trying to help you, but you just took my original intent and made it something else. And that's so Paul says, as I'm going over to bring a relief offering, as I'm going over to help somebody, I don't want them to think that it's about me. Have you ever been there where folks took your goodness, your kindness, and tried to make it like it was about you, and yet and still, you never even thought about all you thought about if I can help somebody. As I travel along the way, then my living will not be in vain. And so Paul says, pray for me. Look at one more person and say, pray for me. It's important. And last week we dealt with the three things I need prayer for. I need prayer because I need help. And the moment you understand, Brother Morris and Sister Wilma, that you can't make it down here by yourself, that's the moment that God can step in. See, the moment when you think you can do all of this by yourself, and I don't know why, Charles, anyone would ever think, see, well, that I could do this by myself, Sister Carolyn, when truth of the matter is, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. See, the truth of the matter is, Sister Diane, is that God wants to get us to the point as soon as we can, Deaconess Hannah, to understand that, that our real help will probably not come from man or woman, Sister Linda, but it's come from God. And so we prayed that last week it was pray for my help, but also pray for my hope because the thing that I think, Sister Tedra, the devil is doing is attacking our mind so that we, don't, we no longer dream so that we no longer have vision. And can I suggest today that sometimes the way I got out of what I was in, Brother Hal, is I dreamt that I could get out of it. Sometimes I thought at first, so as a man thinketh, so is he. Can I tell you the devil is attacking? Here's Joyce Meyer says, she wrote the book on the battlefield of the mind. Noah Jones writes the same book, the battlefield of the mind. Do you know I need help, Brother Sylvester, because it's my mind. When I stop dreaming, when I stop hoping, it is I might as well go ahead and take my last breath. Because that's all I got. To be honest with you, is hope. That, that, that's all I have is, is hope. And I, if I'm real honest, I, I, I got there excited the other day. I just got off the prayer line and I was still on. But I just said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and his how I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Christ. The solid rock I stand. Can I suggest and going upstairs and holler? Oh, upstairs, you might, if you hear me holler, I'm hollering because I still have hope. Can I suggest somebody who has hope, has everything, and the person who think they got some, but if they don't have hope, they have nothing. All I'm just trying to say, if you got hope. Hope to believe that the prison doors will open. Hope to believe that he that begun a good work is well able to finish what he started. Hope to believe that this is not my end, that my latter days will be better than my former days. Hope to believe that God has still got me. Hope to believe that he still got power. Hope to believe that whatever I go through, I don't go through by myself. Hope to believe that if he wants me to get through it, all I got to do is hold his hand and if I hold his hand I will get to the destination because I know who holds my hand I don't know if I got anybody who still got hope can you look at one more neighbor and say neighbor I still got hope see Monique if you got hope then you don't look at what you see in the natural layman you look at by faith 2 Corinthians 5 for we walk by faith and not by sight. That's why I don't look at my paycheck. I don't look at my bank account. I don't look at what it looks like now because if I look at what it looks like now, I, that's not faith. Look at it and say, that's not faith. That's not hope. But my hope is that God who promised me is not a man, therefore he cannot lie. And so the devil is trying to mess with my hope. So I need hope. But not only that, we prayed. The third one was pray for my hurts. Plural. 
Because it's my hurts that messes with my hope. It's my disappointments that has adjusted my mindset. In other words, <laughs> that's it, Read. I, I, I don't want to move forward because I'm scared of failing. I don't know who I'm talking to if just because it didn't work last time. Could it be that Kronos and Kairos has not crossed yet? Could it be that what God was saying, you weren't ready for it yet? Could it be that the God that we serve says, if I gave it to you then, you would not be able to handle it and be appreciative of it. But, but I ought to just touch one more point and say, try it again. Try it again because when seasons come together, when God says you can handle it, Anita, that's when God started blessing us. That's when God says you can handle it. Just touch one more person and say, Jay, you can handle it. Because there are some things that I couldn't handle last year. If it happened last year, I might have lost my mind. Is there anybody in here? If it had happened five years ago, I've been praying for it. But if it happened five years ago, I would not have been able to handle it. But I'm a little bit older now. I'm a little bit more mature now. I, I now know where my help comes from. So here's the text from 2 Corinthians. Okay, I'll preach it then. <laughs> so 2 <second, laughs> Kings chapter 18, King Hezekiah is in a situation that he's being attacked. And I think there's lessons this morning we can learn from King Hezekiah. We can learn, first of all, that the first thing I need prayer for is obedience. Look at your neighbor and say, I need prayer for obedience. Because, see, see, God is waiting for me to be obedient. Now, obedience is better than sacrifice. In other words, he wants me to be obedient because obedience gives a signal of my relationship. See, when, when, when whatever mama tells me to do now, I'm older, she's older, but I, I, yesterday, whatever she tells me to do, I still do it because it says respect your father and your mother. Amen. That, now, sometimes I don't want to do it. <laughs> Y'all better help me here. But I'm more obedient because the word says I need to be obedient. See, when, when you are obedient... That means I trust God. When you are obedient, that means we always got choices. Look, look at your neighbor and say, I always have choices. And here's where the devil will attack us, Sister Kathy. The devil, Brother Williams, don't want you to think that you got choices. In every situation, there are choices. And the choices we make dictate our relationship with God. I think I need to say that again. The choices we make dictate our relationship with God. God knew we were going through a storm. On Thursday, we had a storm, and we just said people stay home because not that we were scared, but we don't need to tempt God. Y'all better help me here. And so sometimes we just got to use good sense. Good sense because, yes, I drive in anything, but why risk it? Look at somebody and say, why risk it? Why, why risk hurt, harm, and why risk being on the road when you need to be at home? Why risk doing stuff? And I got a question as I go up saying, why risk trying to do your own thing when you might as well just be obedient to God? Why risk trying to figure stuff out when the God that we serve, he was the one that made us, he was the one that gave promise. Promises. He was the one that set you up so that you can be blessed up. He was the one that says all you have to do in the midst of your trials, just be obedient. And obedience is at every level. Can I say that? Even at work, your employer ought to say you're obedient. Amen? They ought to be blessed that you're there. Come on, somebody, because every good leader has been and still remains a good follower. I love when somebody else tells me what to do. Y'all better help me, because that means it takes all the thought patterns away. Amen? Tell me what you want. Amen? 
when I got ready, I, I called him yesterday going over to the garden. I said, hey, can you meet me over to the garden and tell me what you want done? I don't want to leave that to my own imagination because if I left it to my imagination, I tear some stuff up. Amen. Is that anybody know what I'm talking about? And I'm tired of tearing stuff up. So I just said, tell me what you want. They said, well, you can figure it No, I can't figure it out. I don't want to think about it. Can I tell somebody I'm at the age of my life that I just want life to be simple? Tell me what you want. I'll give you what you want. I'll let you be whatever you want to be. Just tell me. Let's get it over with. Look at somebody and say, let's get it over with God. However you want me to be, whatever you want me to do, I just want to go ahead and get through my situation. Is there anybody else just say, Lord, just teach me to number my days. Teach me to trust you. Teach me not to look at what I want to look at, but let me look at the word of God. Amen. And when we look at this word of God, this Logos rhema word, how many know that's the answer? Can I look at three people and tell them that's the answer. That's you want to get out of your situation. Or even if he don't remove you from the situation, you want to know how to last. You want to have longevity then just be obedient. Amen? That's, that's the game changer. When you, Mike, are obedient to God, when you can say Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways. Lord, if I'm broke, Lord, if I'm going through, Lord, if I'm sick, Lord, if they leave me, Lord, if I go in this situation, in all your ways, acknowledge him. I dare you double, double, triple dare you to start praising him in the trial. Start praising him and say God, you must be up to something because I'm going to trust you while I'm going through what I'm going through and I got a feeling that while I go through what I'm going through, you're going to walk with me. You're going to talk with me. And I'm going to see a bigger you. Lord have mercy. Anybody want to see a bigger God? I, I just want to see you because in the midst of my trials, if I can see a bigger God, everything is going to be. So pray for my obedience. But pray for my objectivity. Objectivity, what's that? Let me not interpret with my own mind was I'm, what I'm going through. See, subjectivity, I don't want anybody to grade me off of subjectivity. Subjectivity is say, let me, here's what subjectivity is. It's whatever you want to put down is what you put down. In other words, objectivity, stick to the facts. The facts are, I might be attacked, but here's the facts. God has blessed me before. I might be going through but this ain't the first time that I've ever been through anything. In other words, if you stick to the facts that the God that we serve promised me and made a question and posed a question, is there anything too hard for God? I, I, I think somebody ought to look at your name and say, stick to the facts that nothing happens that God does not allow. Stick to the fact that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ever ask of. Stick to the fact. Quit letting folks get in your mind. Quit letting your bank account get in your mind. Quit, quit letting things get in your way. Stick to the facts. The facts is if God leads me to it, he is able Y'all better leave me alone to lead me through it. Is there anybody been through some stuff and God kept taking care of you? God kept making a way for you. God was right there by you. Look, just look at one more neighbor and say, stick to the... F Man, if you stick to the facts, God will keep you even when you can't be kept. Is there anybody understand what I just said? God will keep you even when your prognosis is very similar that you're done, even when doctors have given you up, even when the bank account or your banker says no, even when folks says we've done the best you can do, I'm glad when folks say they did the best they can do because when they've done the best they can do, I now stop counting on them and I start counting on him now unto him I, I may not be able to finish this who is able to keep me from falling 
My bank account failed. My job failed. My situations failed. My relationship failed. But now under him who is able to keep me from falling. Is there anybody? I got to leave y'all. But is there anybody in here should have, would have, almost failed? But God made a way for you. But God keeps making a way for you. But God is right by your side. But God says no when everybody else says you're done. But God, do you know my God? I got two more of these to go. <laughs> pray. Pray for me. Pray for my obedience. Pray for my objectivity. And then pray for my obstacles. Anybody got plural obstacles? And what I've learned, my greatest obstacle is me. I keep talking myself out of blessings. I keep telling myself that it's going to be all right, but I don't always believe what I just said. I think I need to get out of here. Is there anyone can admit today that just because I prayed it, I don't always believe that it's going to happen. Can I go on upstairs and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you prayed for it, God remembers what you prayed for. And every now and then, God has to remind us at five years old, I remember the prayer that you prayed, but it took me this long <laughs> to give it to you because you wasn't ready for it at five. I just gave you a glimpse of what you shall be. And before you die, I got to make it fulfilled. I don't know who I'm talking to, but look at you and say, neighbor, pray for my obstacles. The obstacle for King Hezekiah was another king by name Sennacherib. Sennacherib was after him. And Sennacherib had already attacked the cities of Judah. But King Hezekiah said, I'd rather trust God than trust man. I know I'm surrounded, but I, God knows my plight. And I believe from Jeremiah 29 and 11, that's where we were this morning. I know the plans I have for you not for your welfare and not for evil. I got plans for you. Can you just look at one neighbor and say, neighbor, he's got plans for you. And the reason why I know he has plans, if he didn't have plans for you, you would have already been dead. And so God is not through with me yet. Can somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's not through with me yet. I still got some in me. I still got some hope in me. I still got some joy in me. He says at the end of Jeremiah 29 and 11 from the ESV version so that you can have a future and you can have hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I don't know who's here today that got a problem out there. But can I tell you, is there anything too hard for God? Trust God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. I got the question, I gotta go upstairs, Posada. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, who told you that you ain't getting out of this situation? Who told you that you're not blessed when you go out? And blessed when you come back in. Who told you that the devil was going to win? I need to tell you and declare before it's all over, you will win. You will come out of your situation. It starts with your mind. Let your mind be stayed on Christ. Let your mind be stayed on the promises. I'm standing, preaching harder than I want to preach, but I'm standing on the promises of Christ, my Savior. 
Is there anybody in here that God promised you some stuff? If he promised you some things, just look at one more neighbor. And I promise you, I'll leave you alone. Say, neighbor, he promised that I will be the lender, not the borrower. He promised I'll be blessed when I go out and blessed when I go in. He promised that he will never leave me nor forsake me. He promised that grace and mercy shall follow me. Every now and then, I get hit with grace, hit with mercy, and all I can say, what a mighty God. Woo. What a mighty God we serve. Do you know this God that will take care of you? Do you know this God that will pay every bill? Do you know my God that will never leave you? Do you know my God that will stick closer than any brother? Do you know? Ooh. Ooh. Do you know our God that will take care of you? Do you know our God that loves you? Do you know our God that sits high and disperses blessings on the low? Woo! Good God from Zion. Ah, glory, 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 glory. Oh, you ought to be excited about God. You ought to be excited about God. You can't do it, but God can. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Ha! Ah, I open up the doors of the church. I open up the doors of the church for anybody online or in person that needs some inspiration. Well, you just got it. Amen. Inspiration to let you know that God is on your side. I'm a living testimony. That man back there we call pastor told me to go do a thing. And I was hemming and hawing. I was hemming and hawing. Nah, nah. And then one more time, I said, Pastor, I'm going to do it. He said, have you done that yet? And I said, no, but I'm going to do it. And he dropped his head. And I thought for a moment, can you imagine? God wants us blessed. And God works through people to get us blessed. And here I am denying the favor of God. Don't you know I made the appointment? <laughs> Glory to God. And now I am the lender. Yes, sir. And not the bar. Not the bar. Come on, somebody. Trust in the Lord. Trust in him. And if you don't believe it, find the evidence in it, right? Find a build a relationship with the person and say, let me see what you got. Let me see, let me walk with you and see if it's true. Just like the disciples walked with Christ. Them disciples, some of them didn't believe. They didn't believe until he was high and lifted up and said, oh my God, that was the Son of God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. God is amazing. And God works through God's people. Amen. To God be the glory. With all eyes closed, I am now invite you to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If you believe in your heart, because it starts with your heart. What your heart believe? You got to have a heart and a love for God. That God, through God's mighty power, demonstrated God's love through the embodiment of Jesus. And then Jesus became Jesus the Christ because of the deity, because of the divinity. And we thank God. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, 
you shall be saved. Saved from what, Pastor? Saved from your own self. Saved from your own mind. Saved from the own, your own thoughts about yourself. And renew your mind. And read the word. And find out what God says about God's people. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for the man of God. God, we thank you for the vessel that you use, Pastor Jeff Robinson. God, we thank you for the teaching that he taught today. God, he taught your people today. Now, God, we ask you to bless him, that he keeps on blessing, getting blessed, so that we can keep on getting blessed. And that we can keep on blessing the world, God. God, we're not afraid of the blessing. God, you said the blessing of the Lord is not grievous, and it adds no sorrow. God, we say thank you. God, we thank you for choosing us this day to be alive one more day to declare your goodness. God, we love you, and God, we thank you. It's in Jesus' name I declare and decree. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.